Yesterday I left it and said that I will show you how, 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 how. We are looking at Deuteronomy 8.18 and I broke it yesterday. I don't want to go into that, but I said the word power in that scripture comes from a Hebrew word coach. And then, then I later on and said, my, as far as that word is concerned and from my pronunciation in English, the word coach means a lot. It means that God is actually my trainer. And I looked at Isaiah 48 verse 17 and I told you that God is in the business of showing me how to make profit. And he says he will lead me in the ways on how to go about it. Now, what is the way? I'm sure some of you are curious. Those of you who watched yesterday, you are waiting to hear what are these ways. And I want us to look at Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 from verse 1 to verse number 6. How does he lead us in the way we should go? Number one, in Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, verse number one, it starts, and I'm going to be using the good news translation. I was looking at different translation and I thought good news really broke it so well. It says, invest your money in foreign trade and one of these days you will make a profit. We are looking at the ways God asks us to follow so that we can be able to make profit. The first thing he talks about investments. He says, you shall be an investor. You shall invest. In other words, whatever it is that you have in terms of money, don't forget to invest in something. Number two, in verse number two, it says, put your investments in several places. You have to diversify whatever it is you're doing in terms of investment. You have to know different things that you're doing in as far as your life is concerned. In fact, this particular scripture, that verse 2 is very good when we start talking about the seven streams because it is telling us you should not rely on one stream of income. Number 3, in verse number 3, he says, no matter which direction a tree falls, it will lie where it fell when the clouds are full it rains everything in this life is governed by laws and principles so when it comes to issues of creating wealth when it comes to issues of making money there are some laws and there are some principles you cannot ignore if you ignore them i don't care how much you fast i don't care how much you pray i don't even care how much tithes you give and how much offerings you give when you ignore some of the laws and some of the principles that government issues to do with the wealth creation you will remain like that tree that has fallen on one spot and it does not move the same way you see a tree fall and it falls and lives there forever that's what the bible is saying if you do not follow those laws and if you don't follow those principles that govern things i tell you you will not see things moving in as far as your life is concerned you will buy many nails those nails i'm saying this because of the story i gave about a preacher who is selling nails for people to become wealthy you will be given handkerchiefs you will be poured oil a whole drum you will go to fasting and praying for 40 days you will do everything you think you can be able to do but when you don't follow the laws and the principles that govern wealth creation i tell you the truth you will remain praying, die, fasting, starving yourself to death. You will remain with as many nails put on the walls of your house. You will walk with handkerchiefs and you will continue walking with bottles of oil. But at the end of the day, you will die a poor man and die a poor woman. There are some things which if you don't follow according to the law, according to the principles that govern them, you will die poor. And that replies to everything as far as life is concerned. Number four, in verse number four, it says, If you wait until the wind and the weather are just right, you will never plant anything and never harvest anything. What is the emphasis there? That if you will not be willing to take necessary risks in as far as wealth creation is concerned, when you're not willing to come out and say, you know, this is an opportunity that I presented itself and I'm going to do what it takes to make sure I go into it and do it, then you will go nowhere. 
There are people who are like what scripture is describing here. They look outside, they see a small wind, they say we cannot go, it's going to rain. They look outside, they see something is happening, they say we cannot plant. Oh, there is a sun like this. He says, no, don't consider the weather, don't consider the condition, don't consider the talk of the people. Go with what you have within yourself. Take the necessary risks in as far as whatever is concerned. Take a step. And as you're taking the step of faith, believe me, you, you will see prosperity coming your way. You see, prosperity and wealth creation does not understand people who are always giving excuses. Prosperity and wealth creation does not understand negative minds. People who are always seeing how difficult things are. There are people in this life who always, everything is difficult. An idea is presented to them, it is difficult because of what? And they always have reasons and excuses. Oh, they always see obstacles. They also see, always see possibilities. They always see how things cannot work. How the economy cannot allow. How this and how that and how, that's how they live their lives. But listen to me, when you're a man who is able to take the necessary risks, it basically means when you see it looking like it's raining, you will still go out and do business when you see like I don't know what is not right you will still go out and do business because you are a risk taker God already says you must have that kind of a mindset this is the way remember I told you he says I will help you profit but this is the way you should follow and I come to Ecclesiastes chapter 11 from verse 1 to number 6 that is where the entire framework is and then number five, verse five, he says, God made everything and you can no more understand what he does than you understand how new life begins in the womb of a pregnant woman. In other words, what he's saying is that, listen, when you are doing whatever you are doing, it may sometimes look difficult. It may look impossible. It may look even sometimes very ununderstandable. You know, you might have ideas and you're wondering, how in the world am I going to approach this idea? How am I going to do this? How is this going to actually work out? He says, listen, the only thing you need to do in number five is to trust God. Once God has deposited an idea in your mind, the key there is to trust him. Why? Because when you trust Trust him the same way you have no understanding how a baby forms in the womb of a mother. The same way you do not have an understanding of how life begins in her womb is the same way whatever idea you are having will start formulating within you and later on be seen in the world. You see, every idea you see out there, every great thing you see out there, somebody conceived it. They could have had voices telling them it's not possible. But do you know what? They did not dwell on the voices, did not stay with the voices. They knew that that thing which has been conceived within them has to grow, has to develop, has to become something, and they pursued on. The only thing you need to understand is that you need to trust God. Don't lean on what you are seeing and what you are knowing. Don't lean on what you are hearing from negative angles and negative energies around you. Just trust in God. And then finally, number six of verse number six in that scripture, he says, do your planting in the morning and in the evening too. For you never know whether it will all grow well or whether one planting will do better than the other now i know preachers we like that verse we have preached on that oh when we are collecting offerings that is the scripture we want to use plant in the meeting so in the meetings if it's a conference you make people give in the morning give them give, give, lunch time you make them give in the evening and in the process you're telling them among us the ones you sold today you never know which is I mean, listen to me, preachers. I wish you can just stop doing that. This scripture has nothing to do with you giving in the morning, giving a lunch time, and giving in the evening. And I know some preachers who know me, they will actually, some of them might not even be very happy about me because it seems like I'm fighting giving. I'm not fighting giving. Giving is okay. And God follows giving. God believes in giving. God blesses givers. I am a giver and I know I have blessings because of giving. But the idea of telling people to give different hours so that any one of them can germinate, that is completely out of order. That is completely out of context and out of what God is actually saying. What this Bible is actually talking about in the same concept of I'm, I'm telling you the thing that you should have in your mind as you venture into the world of world creation, God is actually telling you whatever you start, let there be consistency. 
Consistency is the key here. Don't start now and then you have stopped and you're going to something else. No. Start it off now. Continue tomorrow. Continue the other day. But because as you continue doing it every day, here and there, and you're doing and consistently doing it and pushing and pushing, you do not know which how it's going to come out. Maybe it's going to come out even better than you anticipated. Maybe it's going to come out much greater than you thought, but just don't stop it, which basically means when things are not working out well, you still continue. When things are looking a little bit rough and things are a bit discouraging, you still continue. When things look like they are hopeless and they like there is no way you're going or you look like you're in some kind of darkness, you still continue doing it. Why? Because as far as God is concerned, sooner or later, one way or the other, you will have results. The results could be today. The results could be tomorrow. Today's could be this way. Tomorrow could even be better. But just continue doing it again and again and again. Now, I will be going into the concept of the multiple streams of income. I want to show you that it aligns totally with what I'm talking about right now. It aligns with scripture because as far as God is concerned, Ecclesiastes 11 verse number 1 to verse 6 should be your mindset if you are going to allow the coach to help you get profit and show you how you are going to actually do it. I will be breaking for you in the next video the seven streams of income. Maybe I'll do part one and part two and then we will look at what actually scriptures say concerning the seven streams of income. God bless you so much. I love you so much. Thank you for listening and for following me all the way to this moment. Now remember, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and do so right now. And also never ever forget, let's meet in the field of the millionaires because that's where you and I belong. Thank you and God bless you. Let's meet in the next video. Bye-bye.